I really love when people hear this song and they don't know that much about Greek mythology, but they do know this myth. <laughs> So that's always a cool moment for me. Hi everyone, this is Jay Maya. I'm here with Pop Shift today explaining the context behind the lyrics to my song, Achilles Heel. The central metaphor of this song is the myth of Achilles, which is one that is quite compelling to me and one that I've really been interested in since, honestly, I was little. Achilles was foretold to be the greatest warrior of his time, but the prophecy also said that he was going to die in battle. So his mother, in an attempt to save her boy, brought her to the River Styx in the underworld. And the River Styx was a river, um, if you dipped your self in the river, any part of your body that touched the water would become invincible. But unfortunately, she held him by his heel as she was dunking him in the water. And so the only part of his body that ended up being vulnerable was his heel. So I wrote Achilles heel um, from the perspective of someone who is starting to realize that this person is their ultimate weakness, um, is the person that's ultimately going to, you know, cause them their metaphorical demise. I swear on my life and the river sticks I never thought it'd be you I miss Now I'm dangling by the ankle somewhere cold the River Styx was a really powerful river in the ancient Greek imagination. So if you swore on it, you really meant what you were saying. In the next line, now I'm dangling by the ankle somewhere cold. I'm bringing in the myth of Achilles, which is also relevant, obviously, to the River Styx, because the concept is now I'm, I'm left vulnerable. Like Sisyphus pushing that rock uphill Or echo falling for a daffodil You lured me like a siren to the shore I picked three myths for this line that, I, that to me symbolize this concept of wanting something that's bad for you. Sisyphus was uh, a man who was cursed to eternal punishment in the underworld and his punishment was that he would roll a rock up a hill and right at the top of the hill when he thought he was going to make it, the rock would come tumbling down and he'd have to start all over again. So this concept of kind of cyclical punishment I thought was really relevant sometimes to a relationship or when you think you're about to crest the top of that hill when you think you're, you're about to make it with that person it all comes tumbling down again that's also honestly relevant to the myth of of echo and narcissus which is the second line echo you know is this nymph who falls in love with this beautiful man named narcissus narcissus can't love anything except for himself, and he eventually dies staring at his own reflection in a puddle of water. Echo is left heartbroken for the rest of her life. The reason we use the word echo in, um, in our daily life is um, because she was also, ha also happened to be a nymph who was cursed to only ever repeat what somebody told her. This idea of falling in love with someone who can only love themselves, um, and also this idea that you lose your voice in a relationship. You lured me like a siren to the shore is a reference to the story of the sirens in the Odyssey. So when Odysseus is on his journey, he comes across these mystical beings whose song is so compelling that they would actually lure sailors to their deaths on the rocks. That concept of something that's so appealing but is, is luring you to your metaphorical demise. Now I can keep this love cause it always hurts too much. I keep crumbling, keep stumbling, cause you become my crutch. This line, I think, was one I was really proud to write because up until this point in the song, we've gotten across the point that this person is bad for you. But in this line, we establish that they're not only bad for you, but they're the person that ultimately you go to when you're in pain. They're your crutch. And I think the double meaning here of a crutch being something that you would use when your heel is broken, right? Or when your heel is vulnerable is also relevant because it's like, even when the pain that you're feeling is caused by this person, that's still the person that you end up going to. And that's, I think, what is really troubling sometimes for people who are stuck in these relationships and why they can't get out. Love it, use my Achilles heel Drop my guy when you're with me I can't deal I just ain't when I walk on These pins and needles I wanna kill this Achilles heel In the chorus, what I really wanted to get across was frustration. 
anger, like being aware that this person is not good for you, that the situation is not good for you, and, and screaming at the top of your lungs about it, but not doing anything about it. In the chorus, it progressively becomes more aggressive. Um, and to, and the end of the chorus is me saying, I want to kill this Achilles heel because that you, do, you want that. You, you want to let go of that person and sever those ties. You said you wanted me, no strings attached. I guess I have the face to thank for that. Call me Icarus, cause baby, you're my son. In ancient Greek mythology, it was said that the fate of all living beings was determined by these three figures named the Fates. Um, and every life was symbolized by a thread. And when that life was to come to an end, the fates would cut the thread. Here I'm saying, it's a little bit of a pun. Um, you said you wanted me, no strings attached. I guess I have the fates to thank for that. I really love when people hear this song and they don't know that much about Greek mythology, but they do know this myth. <laughs> so that's always a cool moment for me. Icarus and Daedalus were escaping the labyrinth and Daedalus fashioned these wings for them to use so that they could fly off. Icarus loved flying so much that he went against the advice of his father and flew too close to the sun. The sun melted his wings and he fell to his death in the water. I think sometimes in relationships, that's hard because you fall so hard for this person. They're your son. You fly too close, even though your gut is telling you you shouldn't. But now I'm turning to stone looking in your eyes Cause you love her core only half the time I think I'd be jealous of the web you've spun The first line is a reference to the story of Medusa who um, was said to turn men to stone with her gaze uh, the second myth is a reference actually of Persephone and Hades. Another name for Persephone in ancient Greek was uh, Kora, spelled K-O-R-E, so that's where it's hidden in the word hardcore. Persephone was the daughter of the goddess of agriculture, Demeter. And one day Hades kidnapped Persephone to be his wife. Demeter was so upset about this that she marched onto the underworld and demanded that Persephone be returned to her, but Hades told her that Persephone had sucked six pomegranate seeds during her stay in the underworld. And this was relevant because there was an unspoken rule that if you ate anything in the underworld, you had to stay there permanently. And because there was this kind of loophole, she didn't eat anything, but she did suck six pomegranate seeds, uh, Demeter and Zeus and Hades came to the agreement that Persephone would spend six months of the year in the underworld, six months of the year on Earth. And that's actually where we get the concept of seasons because when Demeter's happy, when Persephone's home, flowers are in bloom, when she's upset, it's winter. And the last line is a reference to Arachne and Athena. Arachne was a mortal woman who was exceptionally talented at weaving tapestries. One day she boasted that she was better at weaving tapestries than the goddess of wisdom herself, Athena. Athena heard that, didn't like it, and <laughs> challenged Arachne to a weaving battle. Halfway through the weaving battle, um, Athena realized that Arachne was actually really good. <laughs> she became jealous and decided to turn Arachne into a spider so that she could weave tapestries for the rest of her life. So in this line, I'm saying, the web of lies that my partner has spun is so intricate that just like Athena was jealous of Arachne, Athena would be jealous of you. Like Atlas held too much I feel crushed under this love Cause with those nectar lips and ambrosia hips Boy, you become my drug So the first part of this line is a reference to uh, the myth of Atlas. Atlas was a titan who was cursed to hold the entire world on his shoulders. I thought that was a really cool metaphor for the pressure that you feel in a toxic relationship where you feel like you're shouldering the burden of everything that's happening. The second part of the line is a reference to nectar and ambrosia, which was said to be the food and drink of the gods. They were delicious. <laughs> if you ate them as a human, you would love it, but you would die <laughs> because they were meant for the gods. So I liken it here to a drug um, because drugs sometimes can make you feel good, but they're bad for you, um, which I think is really at the crux of what I'm trying to say in the song about what the person symbolizes to me. Now it's time to bring the choir, play a game and string the lyre. Boy, I'm like Prometheus, finally taking back my fire.
The first part of this line is actually a reference to the concept of the Greek chorus in musicals. I thought this was a good moment to basically say, I'm summoning my you know, squad around me and I'm gonna tell you exactly how I feel. And exactly how I feel is you're a liar, <laughs> which is a pun because uh, in ancient Greece, there was a popular string instrument called the lyre, which is actually quite beautiful. The last part of this line is actually a reference to the myth of Prometheus. Prometheus was a figure in ancient Greek mythology who defied the gods by um, sneaking up to Olympus and stealing fire for the humans. Basically, the humans were on their last legs, and if they didn't have fire, they were going to die off. So Prometheus made the ultimate sacrifice and stole fire for them. And I'm basically saying, against all odds, I'm going to take back what you stole from me, which is my life and my internal light. Your horse is in the gate again, but this time I won't let it in. Closing that Pandora's box, escaping from the labyrinth. The first part of this line is a reference to the Trojan horse. I'm basically saying, I'm not taking any more of your bad behavior wrapped in compliments or anything that you want to disguise it as. The second part of the sign is a reference to the myth of Pandora's box. Basically, there was this box in ancient Greek mythology that contained all of human sin, and this poor figure in Greek mythology named Pandora opened it and released it into the world. So I'm saying, nope, that box is staying closed. We're not even, we're not even going there anymore. And the labyrinth is a maze that is so intricate that you can never escape. And I'm basically saying, you know, you've trapped me in here for a long time, but I'm finally getting out. No more looking back like a face, labor like I'm Heracles. You're losing your golden touch. I'll end this part like my name's Paris. Orpheus and Eurydice were this beautiful couple in ancient Greek mythology um, who were separated when Eurydice passed away. Orpheus couldn't stand to bear the loss, so he. Um, begged the gods for a second chance and the gods said, you know what, if you can go down to the underworld and bring her back to earth without looking back at her the entire time that you're at the underworld, you can have her. Unfortunately, he didn't. <laughs> um, and as a result, he lost Eurydice forever. So I'm basically saying, I'm not looking back anymore. I'm only looking forward now. The second part of the line is a reference to the 12 labors of Heracles. Basically, Heracles had to complete all of these tasks um, during his lifetime and I'm saying I'm done completing tasks I'm done doing anything that you're telling me I need to do I don't need to bear this emotional labor anymore and I'm moving on I'll, I'll end this part like my name's Paris I lied this is probably my favorite line <laughs> because it's a three-part pun basically I'm saying obviously this line ends this entire section uh, so you'll end this part like my name's Paris Paris is the figure in Greek mythology who actually ends up killing Achilles in some tellings of the story. So it wraps up the entire metaphor of the song, basically saying, you know, Paris is the one who shoots the heel, so we're over. The third part is that Paris actually in some, if you look at it a certain way, started the Trojan War because the Trojan War was started when there was a squabble between three goddesses, Athena, Aphrodite, and Hera about who was the fairest or most beautiful. They picked Paris, who was immortal, to decide between the three of them. So I'm basically saying I'll end this fight like my name's Paris, I'll end this war like my name's Paris, and I'll end the bridge like my name's Paris. And that is the subtext behind the lyrics to my song, Achilles Heel. You can stream my music on all platforms and follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at JMyMusic.